So in this lesson, we're talking about the order of operations. And what exactly is the order of operations? Well, it basically is exactly what it sounds like. It tells you the order used to simplify expressions. And there are four steps. Now I want to repeat. There are four steps. And the reason why I'm stressing that is because the order of operations will show you six letters. But even though there are six letters, there are only four steps to the order of operations. For step number one, we go to the letter P. P stands for parentheses. And all that means is any numbers or operations you see inside parentheses will happen before anything else. For step number two, we go to the letter E. And E stands for exponents. We need to evaluate any exponents that show up in our expression. I don't want to be too wordy with the math vocabulary, but this number here is called the base. The exponent tells you how many times you multiply the base by itself. Step number three actually has two letters in it, and those letters are MD. And MD stands for multiplication or division. So this step is really tricky because it has two things in it. But when you get to step three, you always work from left to right. We're doing whichever comes first. So that means that when you get to step three, you might have multiplication and then division. But if you see division first, that's what you do first. And if you see multiplication first, that's what you do first. So when you get to step three, always start from the left and then go to the right. And finally, step number four. And for step four, we use the letters AS. And those letters AS stand for, you guess it, addition or subtraction. And again, this is done from left to right, just like step three. And also just like step three, we're doing whichever comes first. So that means when we get to step four and we have addition and subtraction, if we have subtraction first, we do subtraction first. And if we see addition first, we do addition first. Whichever we see first from left to right is what we do first. And now to our example. Let's say we had this long expression here. And because we call them steps, I want to make actual steps. And each of these steps represents one of the steps in the order of operations. Let's put an incredibly amazing teacher up top. And since we're at step number one, what we're doing first is parentheses. So that means we're working here first. Negative five plus three. And that's like saying you owe someone $5, but you only have three. Can you pay them back everything you owe them? No, you can give them the three you have, but you're still gonna owe them $2. So the answer for what's in parentheses is negative two. And then I like to do what I call a half step. After we're done doing the math, anything that we haven't used yet, we just bring down. We didn't use the plus sign yet, we'll bring that down. We didn't use a five yet, we'll bring that down. We didn't use a minus yet, so we'll bring that down. And finally, we haven't used a two to the fourth power yet, so we'll bring that down too. And so now we're at the expression negative two plus five minus two to the fourth. Do you see any more parentheses? Nope. So we're done, and we can hop on down to step number two, which is exponents. In our new expression, do you see any exponents? Actually, yeah, we do. We have two to the fourth. Well, what exactly does two to the fourth mean? Well, two to the fourth just means two times two times two times two. Because we're taking this base two and multiplying it by itself four times. Two times two is four. And I can do this two times two over here, which is also four. 
of bringing down the multiplication symbol. And that leaves me with 4 times 4, which equals 16. So now that we know what this means, I'm going to erase this and just put 16. And now that I've done this math, anything that I haven't used yet, I'll just bring down. Have we used negative 2? Nope. We'll bring that down. Have we used a plus sign? Nope. We'll bring that down. We'll bring down this 5. And we'll bring down this minus sign. So now we have our new expression, negative 2 plus 5 minus 16. So, do you see any exponents in this new expression? Nope. So we can hop on down to step number 3, which is multiplication or division, whichever comes first from left to right. So we'll start here at the left and we'll ask, do we see any multiplication or division to do? Nope. So we'll just hop on down to step number 4, addition or subtraction from left to right. So we've got negative 2 plus 5. That's like saying you owe somebody $2, but you have $5. Do you have enough to pay them back? You sure do, and you'll have $3 left over. So this will be positive 3. Since I haven't used a minus sign, I'll bring that down. And I haven't used a 16, so I'll bring that down too. Now we've got 3 minus 16. And we're still at step number 4, so we'll just look for more addition or subtraction. So this expression here is like saying, you have $3, but you're losing 16. You definitely lose more than you have, so that means your answer is going to be negative. But how much more are you going to end up spending than you have? You can pay with the 3 you have, but you'll still owe 13 which means our final answer is negative 13. And since there's nothing else to do, we're done. Woohoo! And our final answer is negative 13. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Math Review.